Welcome, Mr. Barbier. Thanks for coming to the session tonight. I'm one of your hosts, Sophie. And I'm the other host, Amelia. If you don't know who Melissa is, she was an amazing goalkeeper for the Matildas, making 86 appearances over 13 years and also captained the team. She got selected to play in the Olympics in 2004 and also four FIFA Women's World Cups. Welcome, Melissa. The under 12 A's team is inspired by Melissa's nickname, Bubs. Bubs was the first female to play in the semi professional men's league for Richmond FC, breaking history. Over to you, Bubs. The introduction, that was amazing. <laughs> very professional, I like it. It's very, very John. So, thank you very much for having me along tonight. And um, hello to everybody that couldn't make it tonight that might be watching it down the track. Uh, at the moment, uh, we're in lockdown at Mel in Melbourne, so we're all doing what we can to stay engaged and stay together. And what a what like, what better way to do it um, than with the game of football? So, uh, thanks to the girls that joined me tonight, and um, hello to everyone else that might be joining us on a different evening or day. Um, as uh, Sophie and Amelia said, that we are. Um, my name is Melissa Barbieri, you can call me Bubs. And what I wanted to come and speak to you about tonight is um, what I love about the game of football is that it's taught me a lot of things that maybe you don't realise what it's teaching you at the time that you can help or it can help you in your everyday life. Um, one of the first things that football has taught me is resilience. Now, I'm not sure if you know about my story, but Sophie and Amelia has told you probably a lot of the highlights. And now sometimes when you compare your life with somebody who you only know the highlights of, so you, you heard that I'm an Olympian, you heard that I've played in four World Cups. Um, I've captained the Matildas. Um, they're all highlights. But if you only took those highlights, you might think, well, I'm never going to get there or I might uh, not make it because, you know, she's done so much um, and I'm so young and I'm so little or uh, I'm not tall enough and all these things that might come into your mind and you lose a little bit of self-belief. And I want to tell you a couple of things that have happened to me that you might not know about. When I was a little girl, my parents came from Italy. So they were brought up a certain way. And certainly when they came to Australia, uh, they had a certain way that they knew that girls behaved. And when I was born, I was the complete opposite of everything that they knew that little girls were. Uh, I wanted to play in the mud. I didn't want to play with dolls. I wanted to um, play with my brothers on their motorbikes. Um, I really, really just wanted to be one of the boys. And I, I knew that if I, uh, you know, tried as hard as the boys did, I could do anything. And when I picked up any sport whatsoever, I always uh, got it straight away. I learned things really quickly. Um, my brothers hated it because they could never beat me in backyard cricket or in AFL and things like that. And they were qu quite a bit older than me. But when I actually fell in love with, fo with football was when I was um, down at training with the boys, with my brothers. and I wanted to play soccer like they did. I wanted to play football. And everywhere I went, there were only boys playing, only boys playing. And everybody said to me, you can't play soccer, you're a girl. And I thought, well, that's just crazy because um, I'm pretty sure I'm better than most of the boys out there. And um, I didn't take no for an answer. And I made such a nuisance of myself that when I was seven, uh, the under 12s boys coach, said to me, why don't you come and sit on the bench on the weekend? 
And I was so excited and I thought, how lame, you know, <laughs> I want to sit on the bench, yay. <laughs> like what, a, what an achievement. And, you know, I sat on the bench with my brother's boots on. The uniform was way too big for me. And I was just excited to be there really. And the coach said to me, um, with about 10 minutes to go, there was probably only two minutes, but I felt like it was 10. Um, you know, on you get, you can have some time on the pitch and they were probably winning like 20 nil or something. And he felt sorry for me. So I jumped on the pitch and I didn't touch the ball once, not once. And, but I fell in love with the game. And if you thought that I was a pain in the bottom before that, after that, I was a hundred times worse. And I wanted to play with the boys from school and I wanted to play um, in their team and I wanted to do everything that the boys my age were doing. And my mum said, yeah, why not? We'll get you there. And my dad wasn't very impressed at all. But my mum spoke to the under eights coach and the under eights coach was one of my best friend's dads at school. And he let me play in the under eights. And then I played again in the under nine. So I was the only girl in those teams. And whenever I turned up, a lot of the parents or a lot of the boys would say, oh, look at the boy with the long hair. And I would have to say, no, I'm a girl. And I took it as a compliment because it meant that they thought I was as good as a boy and they couldn't tell the difference. And, and I said, no, no, I'm a girl. And it got, word got round that I was a girl. And wow did that really cause some grief? Um, I was banned when I was 10 from playing because I was a girl. So unfortunately, they wouldn't let me play anymore. And there wasn't any rules that said I couldn't play. You know, they just said, we don't want you to get hurt and things like that. And you know, girls, I wasn't gonna get hurt. You know, I would get hurt just like any other boy would, wouldn't I? Because that's, that's what happens when you play football. Um, you can get injured. You can, all those sorts of things can happen. But they literally told me that I couldn't play anymore because I was a girl. And it broke my heart. And I didn't know any better. So for the next, well, six, six years, I, played, I took up tennis and I played basketball. I always played basketball. I loved basketball. I, I was a big Michael Jordan fan back then. And I didn't realize that you could play in a girls team until I was 14 and I was fed up with basketball and, and soccer. And uh, I said to my mum, I need a new sport. And my mum took me to all these different sports and I played them all. And, you know, I liked them and I was good at them, but I didn't fall in love with them like I did soccer. So um, I said, no, next, I want a new sport. And my mum said, hold on you were pretty good at soccer back in the day. So why don't you give that a go again? And I was, mom, you don't know anything. Girls don't play soccer. And my mom was like, oh, yes, they do. <laughs> and she found me an all girls team. And <laughs> guess what? It was South Melbourne. South Melbourne had a girls team. And so I went down there and I thought, you know, I'd find all these, you know, a couple of girls playing, kicking the ball around. No, they had three teams, three teams. And that was a long, long time ago. <laughs> so in 1994, I was 14 and I figured out that you can play football with girls. And, you know, I played my first game with South Melbourne and yeah i just took um i took off where i left uh, left it back in when i was a kid and you know what when when they told me that i wasn't allowed to play anymore i did play i played at school i played with the boys um i was a real tomboy so any chance i got i was kicking a ball around so when i turned up and they said this is your first game and i was like well yeah it is my first game but i <laughs> i do know how to kick a ball and because i was left footed um, I made the Victorian state team pretty quickly. And then I made the Australian team as left. I bet you didn't know that. And But the thing was, when I was 16, I turned up to this Australian Matildas camp and everybody was fitter and faster. 
And in the first training, like on the first day, we trained twice in one day, twice. And I didn't like, I was training twice a week <laughs> and a game on the weekend. And, and so needless to say, after the week in camp, um, I had lots of blisters. I even came home with a tiny little stress, stress factor in my foot because the training load was massive for me. And I didn't make the full squad, you know, and I was really disappointed, but I was so shocked by how much more professional these girls were that I thought, wow. And, and then, but the problem was I, I didn't realize that um, I'd made a mistake. I thought I'd, I was it, you know, I thought I made the Australian team once and I stopped working as hard. I started thinking that I was really good and I got a big head and, and I started to think, yeah, I'm better than everybody else. And I didn't train as hard. You know, I started to think I was too good and I really learned a lesson, but I didn't learn it until I was 20. Can you believe waiting that long to learn a lesson? 16 to 20. So when I was 20, I was watching the Olympics in Sydney um, on the TV. It was the opening ceremony. And I thought, wow, I know those people in the opening ceremony. Uh, I don't know them because they're famous. I know them because I played against them. And I didn't even know that you could play in the Olympics as a soccer player. That was the time I found out. When I saw girls that were my age, that I made state teams opposing and I scored against and, and things like getting MVP of the tournament against and all-star 11s with these girls. I was thinking, what happened? Like, how are these girls at the Olympics? And I actually thought maybe they played a different sport or something, silly me. And I looked it up. And there, there was, football was in the Olympics and Australia qualified because we were the host nation. And I got to watch all the girls play in, in Melbourne because it was the whole of Australia, Australia got to, to host football matches because that's what happens in the Olympics. And I thought, oh my gosh, I can go to an Olympics. I can become an Olympian. And you know what? I trained twice a day from that point on I thought you know what I'm going to become an Olympian I'm going to be 24 2004 I'm going to become an Olympian and you heard John, uh, Sophie or Amelia say that I was um, you know an Olympian and I got there but when I was 20 I was still a field, field player and you know what happened I trained so hard once again too much training too quickly I didn't build it up I didn't do all the right things I, I didn't even have a, a proper coach at the time and I got injured and basically when I was running around my left leg would go numb sometimes some something weird would happen with my left leg and and you know being a left footer that's kind of a problem isn't it so when I went to the doctor well I started at the physio and my mum took me to the physio and the physio said I don't know what's going on I'll send you to the doctor and then the doctor didn't know what was going on. So they sent me to the surgeon and they thought it was a back injury. So when I went to the surgeon, the surgeon said, oh, I'm sorry, Melissa, you're just going to have to give up football. <gasps> I was like, what? I ha what? No, no, you, you don't know. I'm going to the Olympics. Like, I, 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 that's, that was my goal. I, I'm going to the Olympics. You can't tell me that I have to quit football. And I said, why? Why can't I, you know, he goes, well, you know, you, you've got a back problem and your leg goes numb when you run. So unfortunately, you can't play soccer anymore. And I said, well, what if I stop running? And he said, well, you give it a go and see what happens. And I said, well, I'll become a goalkeeper. So in the surgeon's office, I decided to change position from field player to goalkeeper just so that I could go to the Olympics and you know what I already played basketball I had been playing tennis so if you mash football basketball and tennis all together 
you make a pretty good goalkeeper. <laughs> so when I turned up at my next training session and my coach uh, asked me why I had gloves on and all that sort of thing, um, they tried to tell me, no, 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 you're not becoming a goalkeeper. And one of my coaches, Ernie Merrick, at the time, he said to me, no, Melissa, you, you're not going to be a goalkeeper. Here, I'm going to stick you in, in goals and I'm going to have all the boys shoot at you because I was training with the Victorian Institute of Sport at the time. And you're going to see that you, you don't like it because it's way too hard and you're way too short. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to try and prove you wrong. And I turned up into that training session. I stood in goals and I saved everything. And I convinced Ernie Merrick that um, I was going to become a goalkeeper. The problem was I had about two other coaches um, that I had to convince as well. And I did in the end. And as you know, I turned into a pretty successful goalkeeper. So when I think about all the times that, uh, you know, I could have given up uh, this beautiful game and not have gone to four, Olymp uh, four World Cups, one Olympics, if I had have stopped when everybody told me that I couldn't do something, I wouldn't be here speaking to you right now, um, having done all those things. Uh, another time I will bring up, um, because it's really special to me, is that I have a seven-year-old daughter. Her name's Holly. And I had Holly whilst I was still in the national team. And when I played in that national team, the national team coach said, you know, women who have babies don't play soccer again. And I really want you to know that it is totally doable, that you can have children, that you can do anything you want. If you don't want children, no problem. But I want you to know that just because women have babies and, and get pregnant and have a family, they can still be really, really good footballers. Okay, so you don't have to choose one or the other. You know, you don't have to do all that. Whatever you want to be, if, if one of the goals in your life is to be a mum, then go for it. It's probably a little bit way down the track for you, but I want you to know that all things are possible as a female in 2020. And you can just tell by um, how young you are and how much you love the game already to think that I didn't start playing real football until I was 14. So you've already got a few years on me. So um, a lot of things that you will learn on the football pitch, you'll be able to take with you outside of football. And all the things that I learned um, on the pitch is helping me through this COVID situation and being resilient and knowing that this too shall pass and it will all get better in the end as long as we keep working and staying healthy and doing all the right things that fill our buckets every day. Um, you know, we can get through this better people. So even though it seems hard at the moment that you're away from your friends and all those sorts of things, um, really stick at it and know that one day the lessons you'll learn from this time will make you a better person down the track. So um, as you might know, I'm, my, I'm a part of the Bubs soccer team. So um, I was also part of this team last year and we made up a, a theme song. So it's inspired by Bob the Builder. And I'll sing it for you now. <laughs> So, work with the Bubs, so. Bubs, the soccer team, can we win it? Bubs, the soccer team, yes, we can. So, that's our theme song. I love inspired it. by Bubs and Bob the Builder. That is excellent. Congratulations on that beautiful song. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to, I'll have to get the words. Yeah. <laughs> and learn it so I can sing it. In goals while I'm playing. Yeah. yeah. That's excellent. Thank you, Melissa, for coming on and teaching us about your experience in the professional football industry. Stay safe and we hope to see you around. Well, thanks very much for having me, Thank guys. You.